This is Ryu from Streets. Hey everybody, it's Kai. What? Whoa, another green screen video. What? That's kind of weird. That's kind of wacky, don't you think? But yeah, you guys liked it so much in the last video, I decided to bring it back for this one. So today's video is something that I hold near and dear to my heart, uh, fighting games. And I'm not talking about your Super Smash Bros or your other favorite platform fighters, okay, here. I'm talking about your Street Fighters, your Tekkens, you know, those good old arcade cabinet 1v1 kind of games. The reason why I want to talk about fighting games today is because there's something I've been noticing more and more as I've been talking with people about video games and other things like that, and I've noticed that a lot of people don't really care about these kinds of fighting games. And don't get me wrong, it's good to have a gang over that likes Super Smash Bros and you guys can have, you know, a fun time playing it. But I just don't know a lot of people who really care about the 1v1 arcade kind of fighting game. Whether it be my friends or just some casual gamer, more or less they're going to say that they just don't really care or don't really like these games. And that hurts my soul, man. Fighting games are home to some of the best characters, bangiest music, sickest combo strings, and some of the most tense edge of your seat gameplay I've ever seen in a video game. Not even that, but the character designs, the animations, the special moves, the super moves, the guest characters, just everything is so much fun to learn about, dissect, talk about, and that's what I want to talk about today. So the title of this video is Why Fighting Games Rock from a guy who's bad at them or something along those lines. And while I'm not awful at fighting games, I'm definitely not super ultra awesome mega Justin Wong levels of, of gamer, okay? I'm not that cool. If you're one of my friends and you're watching right now, you're probably thinking like, Kai, you're amazing at fighting games. You destroy us every single time you play against us. And while that's true, I like to rebuttal that with a quote from the great Chinese military general and philosopher Sun Tzu. Knowing is half the battle. Whenever I play fighting games with my friends, I always wipe the floor with them because instead of button mashing the controller into little Lego pieces, I instead learn the mechanics and use what I know about fighting games to my advantage. Not to brag or anything, but I've been playing fighting games since I was like seven, and that's at least 12 years ago, so I think I know a thing or two. However, I am a casual player of fighting games, not a competitive one. I play fighting games for fun, not for a spot at EVO, okay? And before this video kind of begins, I want to do a short side tangent about how people view fighting game fans as all being serious players, which is not true at all. First, I want to talk about the misunderstanding that fighting games are meant to be played strictly competitively. You're not allowed to play them casually or anything like that. It has to be strictly competitively and nothing else. And to that I say, do you do you not like fun? Do you not like having fun? Are you that guy? Are you really that guy? There's an argument I hear a lot of the time of people going, well, there's always someone better than me, so what's the point of even trying to train and get good at the game? Homie, why do you play Fortnite? Every video game requires you to have some level of skill to be at least decent at the game, and every single video game is going to have someone who is better than you at the video game. You're just gonna have to accept that. I cannot tell you the number of countless times that I have gotten my butt handed to me in Fortnite because some kid built a freaking Donald Trump skyscraper in front of me and then one pumped me with a shotgun. It happens to everyone. Remember when you were a little lad with your big swirly lollipop and your overalls on and you were playing Call of Duty for the first time and you were figuring out the mechanics of that game? Yeah, you got your booty handed to you, didn't you? But you kept playing and getting good at the game to the point where you're getting kill streaks and sick other things. I don't know, I'm playing Call of Duty a lot. Then, using what you learned about FPS games through Call of Duty, you moved on to bigger stuff like Battlefield and Battlefront and Homefront and probably Home Depot, the video game, Game of the Year contestant right there. The same goes for fighting games because, like in every genre, they're pretty similar in one way or another. Of course, they're not all gonna be the same but there's gonna be some similarities between all of them. And I know a lot of people don't really like fighting games and they think that fighting game players uh, don't take showers and they speak the language of the gods and that they're cheaters for using a special move when it's literally just quarter circle punch. It is Ryu's most iconic move. So what I wanna do today is talk about why fighting games are so great. From the characters, to the art, to the overall gameplay. And yes, this is a three-prong essay format. Uh, I'm a college student, so are you gonna really blame me for that? And originally this video is gonna be talking about why you should play fighting games, but um, it just kind of evolved into me fanboying about them and just talking about why I love them so much. So uh, 
yeah, if you find that fighting games are appealing from this video, uh, good on you. It was probably, that was probably the intention, but if not, enjoy the ride, I guess. Before I begin, I just want to say thank you so much for getting me to 60 subscribers and 200 views on my last video. I uh, did not expect to get as much as I did in terms of subscribers and views, but um, that's just awesome. Thank you guys so much, uh, and it's really told me where I should take my content in the future. Um, of course, definitely another one of those uh, what would this movie look like kind of things. But um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching that again. And uh, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications if you haven't to, uh, to know when I post a video again uh, in uh, like the next five years. Um, but yeah, enjoy the video. Thing about street fights, the street always wins. A good place to start when it comes to talking about fighting games is the large array of characters you can play as in them. Some of my favorite characters of all time come from or appear in fighting games. When it comes to fighting games, characters are super important because they are basically the core of the fighting game. The gameplay, the music, the lore, everything comes from them and their, well, character. For example, let's look at our main man Ryu from Street Fighter. Ryu is a Japanese martial artist whose determination to become a better fighter leads him to traveling the globe and fighting world warriors. Along the way, Ryu gains an evil force known as the Satsui no Hado, which is basically this magical urge that kind of forces you to kill people that you fight, and it can corrupt people completely like uh, Akuma over here. Now I know all this because I uh, read it off a Wikipedia article, but you can also tell it yourself by just looking at his gameplay, his design, and his music. So check this out. Ryu's design, in terms of gameplay, is used as an all-rounder character, which means that he's able to fight anyone and is pretty simple to pick up. And this can easily be linked to how Ryu travels the globe fighting world warriors who would want to challenge him. Ryu's design isn't anything special, it's just a typical, you know, white gi, black belt, you get the gist. But the red sticks out to you on both the headband and the gloves. If you look at the gloves, they're sparring gloves, which shows that he doesn't really want to murder his opponent, he just wants to train and spar with them. There's a big brain move right there. And then Ryu's theme, which is one of the most iconic fighting game songs of all time. You, you know you're from a commercial, right? Like you're not even in the game. Yeah, 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 go, bye-bye. Yeah, Ryu's theme is this really hype and upbeat song and it gives us this vibe of determination and overcoming obstacles like how Ryu has to overcome the Satsumi no Hado and by proxy, Evil Ryu and Akuma. And yes, Evil Ryu is an entire character on the roster at times. We don't talk about that. And all this comes together to make Ryu who he is as a character. And this is really cool because you can infer everything about a character through just how they look, sound, and just have a vibe of. However, it doesn't stop there, but in order to talk about it, I gotta take you on a little history lesson about fighting games. Back in Yield, nearly 50 years ago, video games were really only able to be played in arcades. For the Fortnite Roblox iPad kids out there, an arcade is basically a place you would go to like rent a video game out for like a few cents and, and play it like for a few minutes at a time. Um, yeah, it was a pretty, it was a, it was a pretty good steal, honestly. So let me take you on a hypothetical here for a second. The year is 1992. Your name, Jimmy Cool. Seventh grader who loves basketball, skateboarding, and of course, video gaming. Out of those three hobbies, you decide it's a gaming kind of day, and you go to your local arcade to figure out what they got in stock for you to absolutely annihilate with your gaming skills. You walk inside with pocket change in hand, ready to dominate the leaderboards, featuring who, fat, Tim, Everybody standing in your way. But what do you play first? Good question. You see Donkey Kong. Too easy. Pac-Man? The color yellow is for nerds. What about Dig Duck? Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll get I'll get to it. I'll I'll get to it, but like I wanna like you know go around first and then we'll go we'll get there. Then you see it. This crazy new game, Street Fighter 2. What the heck? You head over this weird machine, put in a quarter, see what it holds within. You see a character select screen, but who to choose? I've never played this game before. How am I gonna rise to the top? Well, you look at the characters, you choose off that. Do you wanna be a martial artist? Do 
Do you want to be a sumo wrestler? Do you want to be the freaking Green Goblin? Ultimately, the decision comes down to looks and design, which is really important when it comes to choosing a character in a fighting game. For example, let's look at Zangief from Street Fighter. In terms of design, we can tell that he is a wrestler due to the attire he wears and how muscular he is. But how does he play? Well, in terms of a fighting game character, he is a grappler, which uh, in the fighting game community, people say a grappler is a character who typically has things called command grabs or command throws that basically grab you regardless of whether or not you're blocking it. Along with that, they have more health, deal more damage, and overall are just really just the bulky guy of the roster. If someone new looking to play Street Fighter V was looking at a character roster and saw Zangief, he could probably infer that maybe that's not the character for him if he doesn't like grapplers, like me. Whenever I see a grappler kind of character, I just cross them out of my list of characters I want to play as because they're typically not my favorite. Unlike Android 16, who's freaking awesome. In other words, the design of a character tells you not only what kind of character you're going to play, but also how they're going to play as well. And this is very helpful for new players wanting to get into fighting games because fighting games nowadays have like 20 plus characters as a base roster and then 8 plus characters as DLC. So there's a lot of options to choose from and doing this really helps them out a lot. A new player to a fighting game only has to take a quick gander at all the characters and their designs to really figure out who they want to play. Speaking of how a character plays, character design can also be used to make you feel like the character you're playing as. <laughs> what I mean by this is that when you're playing a character, a well-designed one that is, the moveset should at least somewhat reflect what kind of character they are. Another example from Street Fighter is Street Fighter V's newcomer Minot, who is an Egyptian fortune teller. So how did Capcom make it so that you feel like a fortune teller? Well, Minot has this crystal ball with her at all times, and she can throw it at a certain point of the stage. Once it's there, she can call it back, and when she does, the ball on its way will hit the enemy, and you can start a combo strain with that. This means that Minot has to carefully and strategically plan out where she wants to put the ball, and has to kind of predict where her enemy is going to be in order to set up combos. You know, it's almost like she's a fortune teller or something like that. I don't know, did you, I don't know. Did you view her at home guess? It's such a simple little detail that's so easy to miss, but it's so nice to see that game developers were so smart to put them in the game. And this gameplay design can be seen in a lot of other characters if you look hard enough. Like Gears from Mortal Kombat 11 is a character who's an immortal being who can change time as he sees fit. And he's a grappler, which means that he has both control of time and control of you. And speaking of backstories, I want to kind of talk about the pre and post match banter between opponents. Whether it's Mortal Kombat 11, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, or Street Fighter 5, I always love hearing characters give banter to one another before or even after a fight. These can infer a lot about a character and how they feel about the world, another character, or something else. For example, in Street Fighter 5, Characters fight each other and have post-match dialogue depending on who they just fought. When M. Bison beats Nash, he says this, You should have considered an honor to have fallen by my hand twice, which gives the player backstory about these two without having us to play a story mode or dive deeper into their character. We can tell that Nash previously lost to M. Bison because of the way he looks, and we can tell that M. Bison most likely beat him that time. What's cool is that we both got backstory and exposition, but also a whole new story that we made five seconds ago after we beat Nash. We can tell a new story has been made because of our victory, which is pretty cool and it's better than some of the story modes that come out of normal fighting games. And one final thing I want to note that's really cool about fighting games is the weird dynamic between players and characters of fighting games being that you can really like a character for their character or their design or something like that, but absolutely hate how they play and then also hate a character for their design or something else, but love how they play. For example, some characters I really like personality-wise have really crappy gameplay to me, like Yamcha, Giant Cage, and Yuri. And then there's also some characters that I hate their guts, but love how they play, like Janemba, Devora, and Luke. And that's just really cool that I can do that. Like, your main and then your favorite character can be completely different characters, which is just really cool. I don't know, I just like that kind of stuff. Now, characters in fighting games are great. They're a lot of fun to dissect and talk about, but what about the fighting games themselves? What do they have to offer? Well, apart from the gameplay, fighting games are filled with some of the craziest animations, the sickest beats, and the most beautiful art I've ever seen in video games. So let's talk about them right now. Now, when I say art, I don't just mean le pretty picture, right? I also mean things like music, animation, and just overall why the game is the way that it is. 
The best game that I could think of that exemplifies all of this is Marvel vs. Capcom 3, or Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, if you're cool. This game, if you couldn't tell, is a game where Marvel Comics teams up or fights against characters from Capcom's gaming library in a 3v3 fighting game. And it could have ended up as a doo-doo poo-poo fart Marvel game like all the rest of them, but Marvel vs. Capcom has such a solid art design and art direction that it's probably a leading factor to why so many people still play this game to this day, aside from the gameplay. So allow me to explain why the art of this game is so good. Starting off, let's talk about the art style of Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Marvel vs. Capcom 3's art style consists of a very comic book aesthetic. The cool thing about having an art style is that it kind of helps players who are looking to play a fighting game dictate what they can expect in said game. If you want to experience a sick anime fight, have them pick up Dragon Ball Fighter Z or Guilty Gear Strive, which are gorgeous games, by the way. Do they want a realistic martial arts fight? Then pick up Tekken. Do they want a not realistic martial arts fight? Pick up Street Fighter. The gist is, is that an art style can tell a viewer what they can expect in a game. And in terms of MVC's case, a player can expect insane powers, crazy moves, and just complete absurdity from both Marvel and Capcom properties. Now we talk about character design. Uh, I already talked about character design in the Ryu section I did for the character part of this video. So if you want to go there and just rewatch that part and then come back here, uh, this is the timestamp. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm not talking about Ryu again, okay? I'm tired of talking about Ryu. I hate that guy. I hate that guy with my guts. I want to see you dead. Animation is a super huge and important part of fighting games. In fighting games, there are two types of animations. Cinematic and gameplay. Cinematics are things like cutscenes, super moves, and other fantastical things that you'll see on screen that just don't involve you pushing a button. On the other hand, gameplay animations are when you use an attack and an animation is played to indicate that you punched your opponent. Not only do they show the power of the attack, but can also show character as well. In Marvel vs. Capcom 3, a perfect example of showing character is Deadpool. If you turn off his voice lines, never seen the movies, never read the comics, or interacted with anything else Deadpool related, you could still tell Deadpool's character through his animations. His walk cycle, his attacks, even his freaking tag animation all show off what kind of character Deadpool is to the audience. And these matter because they can tell a player a lot about a character without having them read a story or learn about the backstory of a character. They can just watch the animations and understand the gist of the character. This goes for a lot of other characters in Marvel vs. Capcom and just other fighting games in general. It's little details like this that make fighting games so in-depth and lets you really know that the developers care about what they're doing. As for the music in fighting games, there's a ton of different genres and different types of music in a ton of different games. Sometimes it's the focal point of a game, like Guilty Gear, and other times it's just kind of background ambience, like Mortal Kombat. But all of the time, they're all bangers. Like many other fighting games, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 has a music for every menu, every stage, every character, and much more that have been ingrained in my mind and many others who have played this game. Get out of my head. Get out of, get out of my head. Please! Please! Get out of my head! I really like fighting game music, and you probably have heard a fighting game song before that you really liked. Like, there's literally a meme that says that Gal's theme from Street Fighter 2 goes with anything. Okay, enough of me talking about why I love fighting game music. What, what's the point of fighting game music? Why does it matter in a fight? Well, it depends on what the music is used for in the first place. If a song's for a character, it can represent their personality, like how Captain America's theme is very loud and bold to represent him being a, well, captain of the Avengers. And also, it's got a little bit of patriotism in there to represent, you know, America. They put both Captain and America in the song, dude. They're like geniuses or something. If it's a stage theme, then it should have some sort of reference to the stage itself. Like if it's a jungle, it should have some like very tropical kind of vibe to it. Or an example here is Tricell Lab, which is from Resident Evil. And it has this very mysterious theme to it, almost like you're uncovering a dark secret, which is exactly what happens in Resident Evil 5, which it comes from.
Regardless of whether or not it's a stage theme or a character theme, it's got to invoke some feeling of action. Ain't no one pulling off a 50% combo to low fight beats to chill and study to, okay? That's for losers. You need that Devil's Never Cry remix for Dante's theme. Feel the freedom like no tomorrow. Kill before a time to kill them all. Pass down the righteous law. Serve a justice that dwells in me. Love that comes as far as the young can see. You need that, like, um, that like feeling like when you like are in the finale of a Resident Evil game. You, you know the one, you know the one. For, for Chris's theme. Heck, funny game music doesn't even have to match the aesthetic of a character or stage. It can just bop. I kind of want to stray away from MVC3 here for a second, and I kind of want to talk about Tekken because every game in that series has an OST that slaps, brother. And I'm going to be talking about Tekken 7 because uh, that's the only one I own. At the end of Tekken 7's third season, a new character, a Muay Thai fighter named Falcom Rom, was added to the roster alongside his stage, the Cave of Enlightenment, both hailing from Thailand and both sharing a theme song. Now you probably think that the theme song would involve some sort of cultural tie to Thailand, which uh, you'd partially be right, because at the very, very beginning of the song, is there any actual ties to it? For the rest of the song, it is the most banger techno song I have ever heard in my entire life. And you could argue that this is like, oh, it's it's Falcon Ron being stronger than his, you know, his heritage, which I don't see that personally, but if you do, that's great. I just think it's a really cool song they decided to put in the game. In any case, I'm done talking about the artistic stuff in fighting games. Now it's time to talk about the game part of fighting games. Let's get into it now. Don't you lecture me with your $30 haircut, Goku dies! When it comes to the gameplay in fighting games, some may say that it's easy to learn and hard to master, and I completely agree with that. The grind to get good at a fighting game depends on how well you can understand the mechanics, and whether it's a really easy game or a really hard game, as long as you can understand what you're doing, you can have a pretty decent fight. Perfect example of a game that is easy to learn, hard to master, that I've sunk in a little bit of time into, is Dragon Ball Fighter Z or if you're boring and lame, uh, Dragon Ball Fighters. Fighter Z has a lot of mechanics that can help newer players get into the game, like auto combos, simple special moves, and an entire button dedicated to basically range attacks. And this is great for new players, but if you want to kind of advance your techniques more, you can try things like Z combos, and assists, and sparking, and air dashing, and cross-ups, and mix-ups, and all that other stuff. To some people that might seem a little daunting and a little scary, but to other people that's where a lot of the fun of fighting games come from, you know, being better, getting better. Kind of like that funny dude, like the silly guy, you know, he's like a little, a little goober, he likes food. Well some other games will give you things like upgrades and weapons and better gear to get better at the game. Fighting games give you actual experience, and I'm not talking about that Minecraft experience, okay? I'm talking about, oh I've seen some things, and oh yeah I can do that, and that oh dang, I'm gonna die kind of experience. And you can definitely say that those games do offer you experience, but they kind of just remedy themselves by giving you, you know, better armor and better weapons so that you don't really have to learn from your mistake going forward. As opposed to fighting games, where the only reward you really get is just currency for an in-game store where you can buy more skins and cosmetics to, you know, look a little cooler and have a little bit more fun. Since that's your really main reward, your real reward is just getting experience to get better at the fighting game. And you're like, why would I want to get better at a fighting game? Well, um, this? Hey! 
pretty sick, right? I mean, like, you can kind of see why people would want to be good at fighting games, because you can do these sick combos and get off massive damage, and it looks awesome. What's also interesting about fighting games is the main gameplay is always the center of attention here. It's it, There's no, like, search and destroy, or there's no team deathmatch. It's all just beat your opponent. And there's a lot of different modes in fighting games that help you out with that goal. Many fighting games have a training mode, a tutorial mode, a story mode, an arcade mode, a CPU mode, a two-player mode, an online mode with rank and casual matchmaking, and sometimes even a tournament mode, which lets players play in a kind of tournament rule set, in a way. Now, that's a lot of game modes for both playing by yourself and playing with other people, but ultimately, in the end, you are still going towards that main goal of beating your opponent. This means that in every part of the game, you are still training to do that exact thing over and over again. Sure, it's a little bit repetitive, but that's what's fun about it, is that you constantly get better and better and better as you play the game in every single mode. Many other people go through this cycle, and because of that, they get better at the game as they just play different modes, like the story, or the arcade, or just online in general. And it's not only working, but it's also fun at the same time. And fighting games are meant to be played with and around other people, and speaking of other people... On a stage! I cannot count the number of times I've gained a core memory from fighting games. Whether it was 7-year-old me playing Super Smash Bros. Melee on a hand-me-down GameCube, 10-year-old me playing Tekken 5 in an arcade, or 14-year-old me playing Mortal Kombat 10 for the first time, fighting games have always been a part of my life in one way or another, and they've only become core memories because of the experiences I've had, both playing and watching them. And watching someone play a fighting game is just as, if not more, fun than playing it yourself sometimes. I remember one time in my high school math class that me and my friends were all done with our work and we had some free time, so we decided to go on Twitch. And at this time, I didn't really know what Twitch was, I didn't have an account, I didn't watch any streamers, uh, I was just really confused. And while all my friends were watching Tyler Ninja Fortnite Blevins, I saw that the Tekken World Tour was happening, and I was very curious to see what the best of the best looked like having previously played Tekken. After clicking on the screen, I was greeted to what felt like a martial arts competition between these two masters going head to head. It was so intense and so interesting that some of my friends actually came over to watch with me, and we were all betting on who would win and figuring out you know, who has the upper hand in each situation. It was a, it was a lot of fun. So why do I bring all this up? Why does this pertain to you? Well, it's because if the previous stuff fails, if the characters are boring, if the art style is bland, if the gameplay is hard, the experiences will always be there. Like, I suck at Tekken, but like, that Tekken 7 finale is hype, dude. Like, that's, that's cinema, bro, that's cinema. Fighting games have been at the center of some of the most hilarious, tense, insane, and wackiest moments in my and many others' fighting game careers. From watching my friends and I get way too invested in an improvised Marvel vs. Capcom 3 tournament to watching EVO Moment 37 for the first time, fighting games have given me so many fond memories that I will never forget. And I feel like that's the reason why I play these fighting games, is for the experiences, the memories, the moments. And if you're wanting some of that, maybe you should play them too. Wait, wait a minute, you made it to the very end of the video? How nice of you, I'm, I'm, I'm flattered, thank you. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. It's all the way to the very end, uh, unlike those losers who left like at the very beginning. Uh, but whatever, we don't talk about those guys. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching the very end. This video was a ton of fun to make. Uh, and yeah, if you enjoy these kinds of videos, feel free to drop a sub or a like down below. And you know, I've been talking about fighting games for like 30 minutes here. And I think it's like your turn now. Like, I don't know how Socratic seminars work or whatever, but like uh, it's your turn or whatever. So go ahead in the comments down below. Tell me, do you like fighting games? Do you hate fighting games? What's your favorite fighting game? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's chat about it. I'll respond to every comment. I will. You can't escape me. But yeah, feel free to do that down below. Uh, and if you want some more content, uh, you can go over to my Twitch page, which is uh, linked down in the description below, as well as the Discord. Uh, we have a lot of fun at those two locations. And uh, yeah, I would do it if I were you, if you were cool, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, I hope to see you there. I hope you sub, and I hope you comment, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye guys. B bye bye. I'm disappearing. Bye bye. Ooh. Ooh.